Hey everybody, I am Kid Cadet, joined always by the fantabulous Miss Danica Janelle. How you doing, sweet D? I'm doing very lovely. How are you, oh. love? I'm I'm awesome, and I think our day is about to get a little bit better because we have three incredible guests. And I think Danica, we should just bring them out right about now. So it. without any further ado, or I don't think we're supposed to say that, right? It's supposed to be with much more ado. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, we have the one and only Will Knack. Ladies and gentlemen. What's up? Hello, How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Woo welcome, welcome. Yeah, howdy from South Austin, Texas. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. All right, let's bring out our next one, of course, from the same crew, of course, the wonderful, you've seen him before, and you'll see him again, probably. <laughs> The wonderful and beautiful Matt Nabeski. Ah. Hi. Hey. Hello again. <laughs> Matt, what was that like hearing your song being played for our intro music? I love it. I think it's awesome. Like it's, uh, that's more of an honor than anything. I think, you know, like, um, it's, it's kind of like, I feel like every time a uh, Les Claypool turns on the TV and South Park comes on, he's probably like, yeah, <laughs> that's badass. <laughs> you know, I well, love it. Thank you. It's an honor. Oh, thank you so much. And we're about to round out this crew by introducing the one and only, and I hope I'm going to pronounce his name right, Ryan Delahousse. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, from outer space. <laughs> the chair, the chair, though, dude. I see the chair. <laughs> you saw the chair. Damn. I saw the chair. That was pretty good. Everybody, hello from North Austin. Oh, well, thank you guys so much for joining us here. We really appreciate it. So Matt has actually been on our show twice before, but Will and Ryan, thank you guys so much for joining us here. So we're going to get right into it. Yesterday was Father's Day. So of course, we wanted to wish all three of you a very happy Father's Day. And one of the things, if they follow you guys on social media or any member of the band, one of the big things is you guys use the hashtag dads who tour. So I wanted to know who came up with this hashtag and what it all personally means to each of you individually. Mm. I don't who know who to... came up with it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all, I, well, I don't know. I don't remember. I just remember seeing it and decided to use it. I think I, I originally, I was like, dad's that tour. And then everybody was using dad's who tour. And so I just assumed it made it my own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That yeah. Works. Yeah. Same. I, I don't know. I don't know where it started either. I just assumed that one of the other guys in the band did <laughs> because I think the first time I did it, I, I actually was like, Oh, that's cool. That's clever. And so I use it all the time. Now it's, it's morphed into a temporary dads who can't tour sometimes with a sad face at the end of it. Yeah, dads but who that's, used to <laughs> yeah, that's uh dads who used to tour. Yeah. But that's, that's temporary for sure. Um, but as far as what that means to me, if I, if I can go ahead and jump in real quick, um, it's, uh, I think it's awesome, man. It's like, it, it, just like anything else in life, like this is, I've known these guys, you know, lo longer than just about anybody, you know? So like they've been my family for 20 some years. And so that to me is a bond. I feel like the dads who tour thing now, and especially now that all of us are dads, Will is now part of the father club as well. You know, so that's like just a bond that we all share. And I think that's something that the five of us and including our managers, the six, seven of us, it's like we're a crew, you know, we're a big giant family. And to me, that kind of says it all. Like, I, I think it's a, I think it's just a different vibe when you're grown up and you go back out on the road and you have those moments together and you experience things together. And then you go back home to your families. It's, it's a totally different world than it was when we were in our twenties, you know, a um, lot less hangovers. <laughs> It sure. doesn't hurt as much. <laughs> what about you, Will? Well, you know, I'm the new guy, the new dad, new everything. So um, the most I've gotten to tour is knowing there was bread in the oven rising, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I have such good guys to look up to who have already been fathers for quite some time now. And, you know, I had a lot of experience. Matt, I guess you and Justin have the oldest children. At, what, at Avery's 12, almost She's 13? 12 going on 20. And yeah, blues the same. Ryan yeah. has two two twins, so it's like six times two. Same. I don't know yeah. how you did it, man. Yeah. Seeing one baby. Uh, wow, Ryan, like hats off to you. I think uh, y'all win a super special award. I don't know what it is, but 
Um, anyway, yeah, it's just great to see the family vibe and how much they do care about their children. And the fact that this is uh, what we do to provide. I, I got no plan B. If you looked at my resume, there's nothing other than playing music and guitar. Like, they wouldn't even hire me at Target. They'd be like, you don't have enough experience. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, I don't know. I kind of digress there. But, yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, – I, I like that hashtag. And I look forward to using it more. I used it in one, but uh, we'll, we'll be back on the road soon. And yeah. I don't want to dwell too much on the dads who can't tour yet or anything because <laughs> – Honestly, like to take it in another realm, this has been a, a difficult time. Like it's really hard to wrap your mind around what's happening. And the more that you, you think you have an understanding, a curveball keeps throwing. And I know that that's a metaphor for life itself in general, but this is a very condensed and, you know, compacted time. And that uh, it's compounded, you know, mm. and uh, I just, wow, so much uncertainty. But I know that the world will come back uh, and we'll be back on tour and, and kicking butt like never before. So Absolutely. dad's new tour. Hashtag dad's new tour. <laughs> so speaking of being dads, we want to know what is your favorite or best dad joke? Everybody. Oh, okay. We've got some lined up just in case. <laughs> what is Chinese dentist time? Oh, tooth hurty. Tooth hurty. <laughs> not bad. Uh, <laughs> not bad. I've, I've got a good one. Um, and actually, I'm stealing it though because I'm playing a this badass video game right now, and th they used it in the video game. Uh, I don't mean to spoil it for you guys, but Last of Us Two. Um, what's the worst part about eating a clock? It's time consuming. Oh. Oh, That's awesome. okay. Yeah. Terrible. Okay. <laughs> so good. <though>. So good. <laughs> Here, uh, I'll just give one that my son uses. He he likes to tell this one. He says, "Knock knock." Who's there? Little old lady. Little old lady who? I didn't know you could yodel. Oh. <laughs> I just learned a couple new jokes tonight. This is That's awesome. Pretty good. Danica, you want to do one, and then I'll do one. Oh, sure. So there's a woman who's on trial for beating her husband to death with, with his guitar collection. And the judge says, is he a first offender? She says, no, first a Gibson, then a Fender. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I've heard that one, but I forgot it. That's a great one. That's okay. good. How about, um, what's Beethoven's favorite fruit? What? Banana na. <laughs> Banana na. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> This is awesome. Okay, so let's kind of go back to your beginnings. Was there an artist or an album or a <clears throat> band that inspired you to want to be in music? Nirvana, Absolutely. straight up for me. That was my first, then and then Hendrix and Jerry Lee Lewis. But we'll start with Nirvana because Kurt Cobain was mad. Cried so hard when he died. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Ryan. Um, well, I come from a classical world, so I was born a classical pianist and violinist. And um, so a lot of the the, the masters, uh, Beethoven and Mozart, uh, Schumann, all those guys were sort of my heroes growing up. Um, but my my parents were uh, children of the 50s. And so I grew up in a lot of doo-wop and Motown, um, a lot of um, Americana. And uh, I found a little band called uh, Blondie and uh, <laughs> the Bee Gees. And uh, I started hearing those string arrangements and um, all that stuff that was in that type of music, Elton John string arrangement. I was hearing all the instrumental stuff. And and uh, then my brother would lock me in, in his room at like two o'clock in the morning and play heavy metal music uh, to me because I think he was trying to get back at me for playing violin at five in the morning, waking him up. <laughs> Uh, little did he know that he he was influencing me into rock and roll music. And so um, right around high school when I met Justin, um, we were exploring uh, modern music, you know, pop music and uh, pop culture and, and Depeche Mode and The Cure and all that were my were my idol because they were singing about how sad and traumatic my life was. <laughs> And um, so I think uh, that's kind of the timeline. There wasn't one one. It, person in particular, band in particular. Uh, but as Will said, Nirvana, I, I, 
um, Kurt killed himself the year of my, my senior year. And so our whole school was ravaged by the death. And mm. so that was a huge influence on me about music. And, um, and then shortly after high school, Justin and I started playing together and, uh, formed the band. It wasn't blue October yet, but, uh, so we took influences from bands like red house painters and, um, um, Idaho and again, the cure and Morrissey and the Smiths and then all the rock and roll greats. And, uh, so yeah, classical was my first love still is. Um, I would say when I, when like, when I was a kid or when I first started playing, when I first started getting into bass guitar, um, my dad had a, a record collection, which I've, I've inherited most. Um, and it was pretty much a, like a, a blend of, um, the Beatles and Harry Nelson and then a bunch of Motown. And so Motown was a big influence on me. And so I always liked, I always loved the bass guitar. I always loved the Jam James Jamerson bass and Larry Graham from Sly and Family Stone. And like, so, so to me, um, you know, that was like that, that really, it, it, I, I wasn't necessarily the bass player that like played bass for the band because I was the, the worst guitarist, which happens a lot. Um, usually it's like, here's four strings. You can handle that, you know? Um, <laughs> so for me, I actually, I actually picked bass because I really liked it. And I really like the records that my dad had. I really always kind of singled out the bass line. And then my uncle, um, my uncle Jim, was actually a fantastic bass player and he, he was in a few bands, but he was in a band called Riley up in, um, in Michigan when I was a kid and I used to go see him play and my dad would take us to go see him play. And he was such a badass bass player. Like that kind of sealed the deal for me. So I'd say like, if there was, if I had to pick out one person that I think had a like profound impact on me as a musician, I would say it was my uncle for sure. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So we have a question Someone wants to know, do any of you play the bagpipes? It'd be Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. Ryan if any of us do. You know he's tried it. R Rizzy Davis, dude. I think What's he you has. Know? Haven't you? I, I actually own a set of pipes, yes. Justin, well, gave, Justin gave me a set of pipes uh, many years ago, and they don't work very well. I think he found them in a garage somewhere and decided to give it to me. But, yeah, all the obscure instruments that these guys – don't want to play it usually falls upon me to either figure it out or uh, fake it somehow and so like for this record i i learned how to play uh well not learned how to play i had a clarinet and uh so it was supposed to be a a, a baritone sax uh, but i was able to fake it on a clarinet because wow. uh, i can only play in the lower register of the clarinet so wow to answer the question directly no i do not play the bagpipes yet <laughs> i have a feeling that uh one of these days you know. True. Okay. Well, I look forward to the next tour with Ryan on the bagpipes and every other instrument. Ryan, Ryan <laughs> yeah, plays it. He plays everything. I, yeah, yeah. Like my husband and I were talking about like the last time that we went, we were like trying to count like how many different like instruments Ryan plays during a show. Yeah. On top I actually, of like, yeah. I actually only play one. It's called the computer and I just press play and then I fake everything <laughs> else. I, I actually had uh, some family members come out to a show a couple years ago in Grand Rapids. And after the show, my, my sister was like, how are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm really tired. She's like, what are you talking about? Like, how are you tired? Ryan has three instruments on the whole show. He's got mandolin. He's got violin over here. He's playing keys with the other hand. And you're complaining about being tired. I was like, yeah, that's a good point. And he's singing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And singing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Man. Yeah. He's our prodigy. Rizzy, Rizzy Davis. Rizzy so, Davis. Yeah. Oh, and I picked, up, Davis uh, I picked up a coronet in Belgium that I still haven't... Uh, quite gotten to but i bugged the hell out of these guys for like two months straight just kind of buzzing on the mouth yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well the comments say they want to see you in a kilt ryan so <laughs> yeah you know you do. well i mean it might show all my tattoos you never get to see but i don't know there you go they're kind of heavy are they mm -hmm. yeah yeah well, I know Danica is planning her wedding and her fiance is Scottish. So I know he's been planning this kilt, which is a really big deal with the different colors and everything. So well, yeah, Scottish, I know Scottish dudes are like six foot nine, you know, and they're <laughs> not mine. <laughs> so they can handle those. Things. I'm like four foot 11. So, you know, <laughs> four foot 11. I mean, he doesn't play the bagpipes. He's just going to be in a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> a swing a hammer. There's still time. Oh yeah. We'll be doing all the, the Highland games and everything. That's great. You see, you right, swing, the, swing the broadsword. Oh, we own one, a Claymore. Yes. 
What? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. Like 16 pounds. I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you guys later because I don't, I, we just moved. So it's in some different part of the house that I'm in. Okay. I, I have a question. I'm sorry. I'm probably deviating from there, but are you fans of Outlander? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Such a good show. <laughs> I mean, I haven't watched yes. it. I mean, there's probably more sex in that than anything else. I mean, my, mom, my mom calls it heen and sheen. So when I go to talk with my mom and discuss the episodes, she's like, oh, did you see that part? I was like, no, fast forwarded through it. Did you see that? No, fast forwarded through it. <laughs> <laughs> sex with, my, with my mom. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, all right, Danica, what was your next question? Okay, so... Um, what would each of you say, do you have a, a, like an artist or maybe even a particular album that people wouldn't expect you to have in your collection that might be, say, a guilty pleasure? Oh, oh man. Yes. Hey, I can't, I can't hear Ryan. Do y'all mind if I uh, refresh and try and come back in? Yep. Okay, okay. See you yeah, he, he conveniently yeah. does this during the guilty pleasure <laughs> yeah. record oh, yeah. part. He's probably the Muppet. Yeah. Show, like, uh, <laughs> um, I actually own the soundtrack to the first Muppets movie where it has uh, um, it's not easy being green. And then what's the one about rain uh, the rainbow connection? The rainbow connection. Oh, it's so good. I actually have the record and it's like a green see-through uh, record with the uh, you know, pictures from the movies and all that kind of stuff. So that would be the one. Ding, 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 oh. ding. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm a sucker for anything with Peter Cetera. Yes, yes. I, I love, I, he's like, there's, I know, he, uh, there's so much of it so cheesy, but like, <laughs> I, I just, I, I grew up loving his voice and, and, um, I've, I've always really, I've always really dug it. And I really like the Xanadu soundtrack. Olivia Newton John. Wow. It's actually a really good soundtrack. It's really I think good. Matt just likes Ralph Macchio. I, I do like Ralph Macchio, actually. <laughs> You've had him on the show, haven't you? We had him on pretty recently. Yeah. We actually had most or a good amount of Cobra Kai. Yeah. That's so cool. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like, yeah. So good. All right. Well, you're not getting out of this one. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I was trying to think I was going to go with something hair metal, you know, but. Um, that was my older brother's influence. But I have this really weird uh, record that I've been listening to on and off. So it's a soundtrack from a 16-bit uh, Japanese role-playing game called Secret of Mana. It's, uh, Squaresoft was the developers. And it was a kind of Final Fantasy meets Zelda because they had action, or, uh, action stuff, uh, action-based combat, but you could level up. But anyway, the, the, uh, the composer, the Japanese composer who did it, it's it's really cool. There's a bunch of different uh, styles that he uses. And uh, on the Spotify one, there's actually like this uh, kind of fusion-y track where there's this pretty ripping guitar solo that wasn't portrayed in the game because they had to use 16 bits so they didn't get the guitar sound right. But the, they did a release for the soundtrack. And there's a lot of actually, I think, Final Fantasy soundtracks. Actually, a friend of mine from L.A., Leah Zeger, she was involved as a violinist. She plays for CeeLo some, but she did like this Final Fantasy uh they played the, the whole game from Final Fantasy VII, and she's one of the wow. violinists. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Secret of Mana. Yeah, check that game out. I, I'm a, like a Japanese role-playing game nerd, sort of. So. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so see, he doesn't actually have a record that's in his house. He goes looking for this stuff. Like, he just put yeah. that on Spotify. So. Yeah. yeah, true. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a record player. I only have like a couple guitars and a piano in my house. It's mine, so. <laughs> that's enough. He's actually sitting sitting in his kitchen right now. <laughs> I am. Oh, you're in the kitchen? <laughs> no, this is the living room. <laughs> All right. Well, Will, while we're talking about you, I wanted to know, and from what I've like researched about how you joined Blue October, were you friends with Matt initially and then Matt kind of introduced you to everyone? Or what's your history with the band? Yeah, I would say that's uh, accurate. Matt and I have gone back probably about a decade now around there. Um, and he was producing a pop artist at the time that was going to be opening for blue October. Um, and I went to the audition and he's like, man, you got the gig, but I was playing with this country artist who just signed to Warner brothers at the time. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't make it work. Uh, but we stayed in touch. You know, I did a couple sessions at the studio throughout the years or when that opened up and, uh, yeah, it just it was kind of the, the right time. And I was kind of looking for a different bus to be on. I, I love the dudes I was playing with, but uh, uh, I'm sober. 
And uh, there wasn't a big emphasis on that lifestyle. People drinking until 3 a.m. And, I, you know, hey, if I could, I would. I, I, you know, I, I really would. I just can't control it. But uh, it's a different environment. Uh, and I just love the music and love the guys. So it was, a, it was kind of a perfect fit. It just kind of worked. So, yeah, but Matt introduced me. Everybody drove me in. And Ryan was like, I, I don't know about this guy. But then he saw what a nerd I was. And he's like, he's too tall. Like, <laughs> don't, don't stand next to me. Yeah. <laughs> he's tall. Hey, you ready, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> That's our side project, the cardboard cutouts. Oh, the cardboard cutouts. The, I like it. Got yeah, it. I want to. I want to add something to that really quick. Will actually broke my heart when he did that audition because I was there through the whole audition process, and I was like, "Yes, this guy's so badass. This is gonna be awesome." And then as soon as it was over, he was like, "I actually can't do it. Um, I have another commitment." But I went ahead and learned all the songs anyway, and blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, oh, my God, no, you have to. Please, you have to do this. You're too good. So it made everybody else look horrible. Oh. <laughs> Noted. Yeah. Do your homework. That's all it is. Do your homework. Practice. Yeah. You know, pretty easy. Yeah. A lot of dudes just want to kind of get the victory without putting in the fight. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Everybody that's... wants to be a quote unquote rock star have the musician life, but they don't think about the thousands of hours it takes prior to even getting on the stage. Yeah. For sure. The grind. Well, I guess kind of in that same vein, what? the follow-up question to that for us would be, um, what was it like? That's from a self-help book I'm reading. Sorry. Are you someone oh, talking? I no. think I can't hear Danica. Oh no. I hear Danica. Hear me? Well, yeah, did you I hear you? Well? Okay. Danica? <laughs> nah, <laughs> can you hear me yes I hear okay. hmm. it's like every other person i'm gonna try again i'll be right back okay see you later well now that he's gone <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, every day well while we're waiting for for will somebody in the chat wanted to know if you guys could collaborate with anybody uh who would you guys want to collaborate with Oh man, I, I it's always a hard question. That's like picking one of your favorite babies, you know. Um, Pick a favorite baby. <laughs> I, I, and mine's obscure because they're all dead. So I, I would just love to be in the room and watch uh, Beethoven conduct. Mm. Uh, you know, I play in the orchestra while he conducted. I mean, he wasn't that great of a conductor, but uh, to be able to experience that would be pretty amazing. I know it's kind of a a uh, cop out on collaborating with somebody. No, not at all. But that's what you're passionate about. Actually, you know what? I will say that for a while now, I have been trying to put together a collaboration with Lindsay Sterling. And, oh, ooh, and, uh, sensational. Yeah. She's super busy and like uber famous now. And so it's kind of hard. But, uh, we, we do share, we're both Yamaha artists. So I play Yamaha violins and she does as well. And so there's the connection there. Uh, and we almost got to see her live in Berlin. Um, but uh, some other people wanted to leave, so. Boo. Anyway, <laughs> anyway there's my answer. Um, gosh, that's tough. I mean, for me, I'd really, it's not so much like, I guess, collaborating, like m creating a piece of music with somebody. Like, I feel like I, I, honestly, I get to do that already. You know, I get to work with everybody I want to. I feel like I get to write and record with so many different people that I'd, I respect and I just lo like, I feel like, I feel like the musicians that I get to work with and the people here, like they rival anybody, you know, they're just as good if not better than any musicians in LA or Nashville or New York or like, I feel like this is the cream of the crop right here. So, um, but as far as like being, if I could just, I guess, sit down and soak up some knowledge and work with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, it would be Adam Blackstone. Um, okay. Yeah. He's, he's a incredible bass player, mm. producer, um, MD. And he uh, um, he does like the Super Bowl halftime show. He works with Justin Timberlake, Rihanna, a bunch of different people. But that guy, like, he's just ridiculous. He's so good. Everything he does is so amazing. I would just love to just spend one day just hanging out and shadowing him for a day. See how he does what he does, for sure. Like, can I go get your laundry for you, bro? <laughs> yeah, anything. <laughs> Something. Will, can you hear us? Danica, talk. Hey, can you hear me this time? Okay, I f when I logged on, I could hear you, then I couldn't hear Matt. First, I couldn't hear Izzy. I tried my laptop again this time, and I hear everybody, but am I lagging? No. Really, you look good. Right now. 
Okay, so let's just try this right now. Like, here we go. Fingers crossed. Let's do it. Let's I hear everybody. I see everybody. All right, Danica, go oh, let's try this. Uh, let's try this question again. So, uh, Will, for you, what was it like joining a band that was already, you know, well established and already had a loyal fan base? Um. Wow, that's an interesting question. You know, uh, I guess I knew of the band initially at the Hate Me era. Like, I just remember that song on the radio, and uh, I, I like that song. And actually, it, it kind of uh, it, it it relates to a lot of people and for a lot of different things. But I've always struggled with substances and stuff like that. And at that time, was going through a really bad uh, relationship and drugs and all that. So, like, man, that it just. I remember hearing that song on I-35 pulling off a of riverside. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> but anyway, I feel like it gutted me. Um, but, yeah, you know, I stayed in touch with Matt. And uh, I guess it's like as far as a guitar player, like, you know, CB was with those guys for a long time. And uh, it's like doing honor to what he did, but then slowly trying to bring what I do uh, respectfully, you know. So you have to have some respect when it when it's been. You don't just like you don't just make up whatever you want to do. You listen to the records and do them honor. And uh, hopefully, I feel like I'm doing that. And you slowly, you know, bring your own uh, flair into it. I remember we did this uh, amnesia recently, and I like, or I would take like a little bit of CB's phrase and then add to it. Or on a solo for uh, X amount of words, I did the first half, I did his, and then I went off and did my own thing. So it's like give people a nod, like a tip of the cap to where it is and then where it's going or where, you know, who I am too. Because basically, you know, if you if you try and copy someone too much, you're just going to be a lesser version of them. It's like you need to do – we can only be the best us that we can be, if that makes sense, artistically. So um, it's it, – yeah, uh, I kind of am digressing and, and, and losing my articulation in that. But, yeah, a lot of respect for CB and what had come before me. Um, but trying to give it a new uh, kick in the ass and my own flair. So I hope I'm doing that. Uh, let's see. Rizzy will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always listening. Yeah. Well, it seems like everyone, you know, in the chat definitely really enjoys you being part of, of Blue October. And I have to agree that I love seeing you be part of the band. I think you are phenomenal. Well, thank you. I, I, would, I would throw this out here that he's very humble and, uh, you know, see – uh, my brother from, you know, from another mother and, and miss him dearly. And he was a, an amazing thing, what he did for Blue October. But what Brill, what Will brings to the table is beyond uh, anything of copying CB or anything like that. He, 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 like he said, he takes a little bit of flavor and then he makes it his own and he absolutely kills it on the guitar. And if anybody thinks anything less of them, they, they can just go away. Cause I challenge <laughs> anybody. I challenge anybody to play the instrument as well as will he, hands down the best guitars i've ever seen and uh -huh. had the amazing pleasure of playing with so man well, thank you um <laughs> <laughs> so what has making music been like for you guys during this quarantine time Woo. um i would say it was difficult and and exciting and um, you know, you, you think, well, I've got all this time. What am I going to do? And then there's these projects that I've wanted to do for so long. And, and now I'm getting to do those projects, but also trying to reinvent myself and keep myself busy and started doing live streams. And, but I have all of these works of music that are in my more classical stream of mind. And so I've been working with, um, a gentleman, good friend of mine, um, on my classical arrangements and and i have a, a choral like a choir uh hymnal thing uh very much like a a bach piece uh wow. a large choral arrangement and strings and and i've been working on it for about a year now and uh he's he's helping me put it to, or bring it to fruition and so i'm excited to to get that to a point where i can show it to the world and um, so I really had time to do that. But then there's the other side of it where it's like, man, I have all this time. I should be writing new music and sending stuff to Justin. So, you know, we can make a new record. And and it's like, I don't know, I, I get inspiration from being around my boys, you know, and playing music and, and touring. And I the world sort of gives me the influences that I hear. And I do a lot of uh, sampling on the road with my phone and, and just what I hear. And that really brings me ideas for new music. And <laughs> You know, uh, for most of the day, I've got my kids screaming at me. And so it's kind of hard to go into the studio and just start writing, you know, the, the best pop song you've ever heard, you know. 
so I dabble in uh, in other things, but uh, it's been nice to to go to those projects that I don't have time for on the road or in normal life, and and really dive into them and not worry about any deadlines. You know, uh, totally. So that's been a lot of fun, and I've I've made some good progress on it. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, and. Um, then I'm always writing for my side project, The Meeting Place, uh, which is my newest uh, development. I put out a record uh, last August, and and so I'm, I'm always writing for that as well. And it's a more instrumental-based um, um, uh, project. And so both these guys are a part of The Meeting Place when we are touring and playing. They both played on the record, and, and so um, I'm grateful for the contribution from them as well. So That's fantastic. Matt, Will? Um, I, f I feel like I've probably learned more about myself as a songwriter than I ever have, like during this quarantine time, um, because I don't have deadlines on anything. And so when you don't have deadlines, I've always been under the like, for as long as I can remember, I've always had this uh, schedule, this kind of unspoken thing that it was like, okay, I'm home. I'm going to be home for two months and then I'm going to go back on the road again. And when I go back on the road again, my world changes for a while. Then I'm going to come home again. Then it's going to go back to this. Then I'm going to go hit the road again. And it's like a big cycle. And all of a sudden that's changed and stopped. And so I've been working on my own project as well, which Ryan and Will have actually both played on as well. We obviously <laughs> like each other. Um, <laughs> we, we like each other. Um, and I've been doing, I'm doing my own thing um, that we talked about before called Icarus Bell. And I'm starting to realize that when I don't have a deadline, I start going down the rabbit hole and I start doing what I tell everybody else not to do. And so like when I'm in the studio as a producer, I'm like, nope, you're going on the rabbit hole. It's not, you need to make decisions, blah, 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 blah. And then when it's my turn to do it, it's a lot harder for me to do that because I start dissecting stuff. And then I come back a week later and I go, hey, guys, actually, I've been listening to this and I think this verse sucks. Let's do this instead and let's re-record this and then let's change the key. And there have been times where both Alan and Victor are both looking at me and they're like, are you OK? Like, do you just need to take a break or something? Because I'm because I can't stop changing things and I can't stop editing things because I want it to be, you know, a certain way. I want it to be perfect or whatever. But, um, so it's really taught, it's taught me to let go, I guess. And so now that I'm, I've moved into more of the lyrics and the, the vocal melody phase of, of this record, um, I'm realizing I'm learning a lot about myself. I'm learning a lot about the th what I really want to say and how I want to say it. And then, um, and not thinking too much about it you know, not overthinking everything to death, trying to be too clever or trying to be too whatever. And, and, and funny enough, um, you know, I just turned 44. I've been in the band 20, 20 some years and I still have little moments where I'm reminded of stuff like it's the first time. And the other day I was working on lyrics and I thought to myself, I was like, I, I actually wonder what Justin would do right now. You know, like, because he's so good about just saying exactly what he wants to say and not overthinking it and not worrying about it being on the nose and making it a way that is so relatable that he's brilliant. He's genius at that. And so I've caught myself going, wow, you know, like he's shit. He's really good at this. Like this guy's really good at this. And you, you know, maybe it's things that you take for granted after a while, you know? So, but I, I would say this has been, I'm really, I'm really grateful. You know, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not grateful for uh, some of the, the the things that have been hard and trying and tough about these times, but I am grateful for the time that I've had to kind of look at myself mm -hmm. and the time that I've had to spend with my family and take a step back and sort of reassess things as a, as a creative person, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well? Well, um, funny you ask. So I have a very vulnerable project coming out tomorrow on Bandcamp. It's just me live in lockdown, my voice and acoustic guitar. Yeah. I'm not overthinking stuff, right? I just, um, I've, it really started with me singing for Nova. And then I realized like, wow, I'm, I'm singing softer and uh, not hiding behind a big loud guitar. I can't really turn up my guitar amp right now and crank a fuzz. So it's the acoustic guitar and the, the ukulele over there. But, um, yeah, I have a seven song uh, EP that's releasing on Bandcamp tomorrow. And I think it's only going to be there. It's, uh, I'm not going to release it to Spotify or iTunes, uh, at least not anytime soon. And uh, a lot of people have pre-ordered it. But if you haven't, go check it out. You'll get two tracks right away. And then the rest of it's tomorrow. And uh, there's a song that I wrote for my daughter, a song I wrote uh, for my partner, a song I wrote uh, – uh, I also uh, – the bonus track is, is me playing Bach, which was the first – 
stuff that she heard because I started learning the cello suite in G that he wrote, but I learned it in D major because it, it voices well on guitar there with the octave sits. Um, if you're playing in G, you'd have to play too high. And anyway, um, it fits well in D on guitar, but I, I recorded that. So when she came out of the womb, I had it on my phone ready to play for her. Um, and then, you know, uh, I started sending a, a bunch of instrumentals to our singer, Justin, you know, uh, and he uh, sent me a, uh, he FaceTimed me yesterday to wish me a happy uh, Father's Day and said he's been writing to a bunch of them. So it'd be interesting to see what he comes up with, but I've sort of learned what he likes. And uh, and in that regard, you don't overthink it either. Because I think a lot of times as a uh, musician, I want to like come up with the most creative brand new chords you've never heard, but that's not, it's not relatable. All of a sudden, you know, some jazz music is so heady. It's like, you can't even find the one, like you lose um, mm -hmm. the force of it. So it's like, you know, just, don't overthink it, lay it down, put a little cool ambient guitar hook on top of some chords and send it off and see if he's inspired uh, by it vocally. Um, I know uh, originally I had started sending him stuff that was more produced and he was like, hey, take the beat off so it can be open so I can interpret it. So it actually <laughs> makes it easier to, uh, to, to create in that way because I leave a lot more room and try and not fill everything up. Um, but yeah, please go. Um, my Instagram has the link for it on my profile page, the... Uh, um, the Bandcamp download, so link in bio, I think, as they say, that's what the cool kids say, right? Link in bio, link in bio, yeah, link in bio. and live in lockdown. There's some um, cool songs that I'm uh, happy to share with y'all, a little anxious to share with y'all. And it's just like I said, me sitting in a room, one pass, no overdub, guitar, no, that was it. Live in lockdown, awesome. volume one. So Awesome. That's awesome. Yay. That's so exciting. Now I have something to look forward to tomorrow. Yeah, Ryan yeah. tried to give me a push over the edge. She's like, you need, you need to do something. Just record your voice and guitar. Why not? And I was like, all right. You're right. I'm going to do it. Oh, oh Fade Wing. What's, What's up, up, Fade? Oh, hi. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, my gosh. He looks so much like my nephew. This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> they, they say he looks like me, and I said, he better. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll have to awesome. about maybe Danik and I will each ask you one more question and then we have a game that we're going to play. So let's see, let's see. Okay. Do you guys have a favorite song off of the upcoming album? Yes. Uh a tune called Only Loss is Found. Hmm. Dang, I was gonna go with that one, but because you did it, I'm gonna try and think. Um you know, Five for Love is pretty cool. Um, man, Loss is Found. Sorry, yeah. I'm just gonna yeah, yeah, the collective we wrote together, uh, Stay With Me. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the, I would say Stay With Me. Is, I think Stay With Me is my favorite just because I love that. I love playing that bass line. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it reminds me, this actually is kind of a weird comparison, but there's a Flaming Lips song um, on Yoshimi. Um, what is the name of the song? Um, I can't remember the name of the song, but but the baseline kind of reminds me of 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 that, and I kind of ripped off that line a little bit, and it's really fun to play. So, and I I really um I'm really proud of uh of the weatherman as well. Um, that's uh I got to I got to work on lyrics uh, on that one with Justin. Um, and it came from a very personal place, so I'm proud of that one for sure. I love how it turned out. Yeah, it's a great um, song, Matt. There's some amazing songs on there. Fight for Love is is uh, not only is it the message incredible, but also the, the emotion behind it and just the layering of guitar. All the people that worked on it, uh, you know, with uh, Mark Needham doing the mixing on it. And uh, it's uh, yeah. very lush. And uh, so that that's our newest single out right now. And um, But I think, we, you know, we're just it's always like picking your favorite child. You know, now with our, our 11th studio record coming out at uh uh, it's hard. We love all of them, you know. Definitely. All right, Danica, what do you think? You want to ask one more? Should we play the game? Yeah, let's do one more and then we'll jump into our game. So uh, speaking of the fact that Mr. Vincent Dabrowski just said, Fight for Love is the anthem the world needs right now. Agreed. My was going to be, uh, Fight for Love, does that song now hold a different meaning based on everything that's going on in the world than originally written? I mean, it, 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 anything you know anything it could be your personal the stuff you're going through personally or 
or uh, you know, the advice you have for a friend that's going through something. But then, yeah, you look at the global um, things that are going on right now uh, with, uh, you know, any anything in society that's you just feel sad about or you feel hurt or you just feel disappointed or, or whatever, you know, love, love is a powerful thing. And um, one, one thing that I've always been a, a nature buff and like to get out in nature and uh, just recently came into contact with this, the destructive force of humans uh, to nature and um, the, the plastic, uh, you know, what's happening in this world with plastics and destroying our oceans and, and the litter that, that we do. I'm like, man, we got to fight for the love of this planet because I look at my children and, and my, my kids' kids, they're going to inherit a, a garbage dump. And uh, so I don't want to get off on that. But yeah, I think that fight for love is definitely relevant at this at this point in life. For sure. Awesome. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think uh, I think that it it was already coming from. It's not necessarily that the the message has changed. The, it's just that the message is just it's extremely relevant. Hmm. Um, it's still you know it has the same meaning. And I know and and like when we were breaking this the song down because there's actually a point in time where like even I remember Ryan and Justin and I were in the front of the bus talking about it one, one morning and talking about like what, you know, really at the heart of the song, what is it really, tr you know, what is the message and what are we saying? And I think it's the same message, but it's, you know, it's very much like that you, you, nothing is easy, you know, and, and nothing is, nothing's fair. And you have to, you have to, uh, you have to really, really dig and you have to really fight for the things that you love and the things that you care about. I think, I think that's extremely relevant right now. You know, the, while there's, a lot of division in the world and there are a lot of people that are seem to be picking a side um, instead of coming together. You know, I think that there are, I think now we're seeing a lot of people that are trying to bridge, bridge the gap and a lot of people that are trying to just reach out and say, look, you know, there's, there's a, there's a reason that we're passionate about this. There's a reason that we all, that we all care and we need to come together for sure. Awesome. I believe that. Okay. So, at this time, we are going to play a game of Would You Rather. So we're going to bring the graphics up on the screen, but we are calling this game I Want It, okay? So nice. basically, like I said, this is a game of Would You Rather. So let's see if we can get these graphics up on the screen, and I will go and read first. So Would You Rather perform on Saturday Night Live or perform on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon? I want to go with Jimmy Fallon. Mm. Okay. Well, it's, it's tough, man. Like, I want to hang out with Questlove so bad. Just <laughs> so bad. But Saturday Night Live is the biggest big dog of all time. So. Okay, Matt. I'm going... I'm going SNL for sure. I mean, I go I, I go back and watch old SNL episodes. I watched one with Devo uh -huh. the other day. Oh, <laughs> and it was... Uh, it was awesome. And it's like some of my favorite performances. Speaking of Nirvana, that's one. Chili Peppers, like some of my favorite performances ever were on Saturday Night Live. You know, Sinead O'Connor. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, to be able to get up and do that, that's like, that's mm -hmm. a dream. Awesome. Sorry, Jimmy. Maybe next season. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's the second one. Next one. Would you rather enter an air instrument competition or enter a kazoo kaz competition? <laughs> And an air instrument competition. I mean, you know, we've got to have an air violin contest, right? <laughs> hey, what about uh, Tim, our sound man's daughter with the ugly saxophone? Oh, right. yeah. she's. Oh, she would win right. that for sure. Absolutely. Right. I'm going with the kazoo. <laughs> All right. I'm going with the kazoo. One of my favorite songs ever actually is, a so is uh, Steal My Body Home by Beck on mellow yeah. gold and there's yeah. a kazoo section at the end of the song that is so <laughs> badass of course it's so good <laughs> it's so good i'm serious go listen to it it'll blow your mind done what about you will um yeah i'll go with the, the air the air competition because i don't think anybody can do kazoo better than david lee roth did on uh running with the devil right what's that a kazoo yeah on one part yeah yeah wow. okay all right here's the next one would you rather play Into the Ocean on repeat for 24 hours or play I Hope You're Happy on repeat for 24 hours? This is so good. <laughs> 24 hours, folks. This is a long time. 24 it's hours. Uh, I, I think my kids would expect me to go with I Hope You're Happy. 
because my son literally sings it about 12 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> so double that, and then we have your answer. Okay, all right. Yeah, then I'm banging my head on the wall. <laughs> I, I would have, I, I would rather play I Hope You're Happy because I really enjoy playing that song, but for 20 hour, 24 hours straight, no way. I would go with Into the Ocean because it's whole notes and it's easy <laughs> to play. I hope you're happy. I'm playing downstroke eighth notes with a pick and I would be, that would kill me. I'd, I'd, like I could barely get through three and a half minutes. <laughs> There's no way. No, I feel that. I, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, Into the Ocean, just like. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go with the end of the ocean, but I do want to say a uh, side note about Ryan's kids singing. So I played Fortnite with Fade Wayne sometimes, right? We get on, get our, our little uh, cans on. And uh, time a couple weeks ago, he was just singing the bridge to uh, uh, Oh My My over and over and over for like three games. He's, come on, let me free fall. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Over and over, man. Yeah, and then and then I'll go into this is what I live for. <laughs> so my son's addicted to Fortnite, man. He's probably you know you're playing at three o'clock in the morning, and you keep getting sniped by some six year old. You know that's him. So that's that's my son. <laughs> no, Ned. All right, all right. Our next one is: Would you rather get matching tattoos or have to choose each other's tattoos? <laughs> Choose each other's tattoos for sure. What are you showing us, Matt? Matt Bunk cool. life. Bunk life. Bunk life. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you didn't Where's expect that, did you? <laughs> we got. We have matching tattoos. Oh, oh. That. Yeah, that's an easy one. Hey, matching hey. tattoos. Yeah, yeah. and I it's have matching tattoos also. Each other's tattoos. Yes, we do. I think. <laughs> I actually think choosing each other's tattoos would be pretty fun. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. Now, I, you know, I can admit I have a I have a pile of poop on my hip as a tattoo, so I'm. <laughs> it's pretty much there's no limit. I'm, I'm like, yeah, you, you, come on, bring it. Whatever you think you're is going to be embarrassing, it's just skin. Let's stick it. Yeah. Oh, that's that great. <laughs> All right. Here's the next one. Would you guys rather compete on Dancing with the Stars or compete on Top Chef? Okay, easy. Uh, I'm going to go Dancing with the Stars because my girlfriend is obsessed with Bobby Bones. Like, obsessed. If you're out there, Bobby, if y'all know, y'all can get me like backstage passes to Bobby. <laughs> I actually left him a note uh, backstage. We played the National in uh, Virginia or whatever. And I left a note for him on the piano, just trying to like tell him about it. And uh, he didn't respond. So I guess I'm not cool enough for Bobby. Yes. But um, I'd have to get on Dancing with the Stars and even kick ass harder than he did. <laughs> my yeah. man in front of my woman, you know. Oh man! <laughs> I want to see Will dance the tango. Right. I I'm not a dancer. <laughs> I'm not a dancer. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was a break dancer. I was I was even in a club. I was in a break dancing club. I think what? we were called. I think we were called the Zoid Boys. Yeah, you and you and two of your fake friends. No man, it was a bunch of us actually, and we were good. We had cardboard. We carried our cardboard around with us. We had That's bandanas right. and parachute right. pants and shit. Um, this is getting really embarrassing. We would break dance at the Frosty Boy. Um, Did you watch like Beach Street and Break In? Oh, and God. Yeah, I loved all that. I loved it. Yeah, Break In 2, Electric Boogaloo. Um, oh, man. But, but, I, but, but now, like me, 44 years old, I'm going to go with Top Chef. <laughs> Cause yeah, I could you stop telling people how old you are. We're, all, could, we're only 24 right I now. I cook and eat, man. I like to cook and eat. Yeah, I'm good I'm, at that. Say top chef. My wife and my daughter are, uh, they watch the, uh, the baking contest shows with the mm -hmm. kids and the adults. And, uh, so. Okay. Yeah. Danica. All right. All right. Next question. Would you rather incorporate an accordion into your band or incorporate an automaton into your band? What is an automaton? That That's weird so cool. effing thing right there. I bought one yesterday. It arrives tomorrow. It like you squeeze its mouth and it makes like a wah noise. And then the thing on the front is a sensor. So it's like the higher up, the higher the note. And then the lower. It's the like lower. a like a theremin kind of. Uh meets a uh, i'm intrigued so, yeah. uh, it's japan's best-selling musical what? Toy. that's crazy J yeah. ryan ryan played a japanese air who is not that what it's called on into the ocean it's like some like two-string instrument on a stick kind of deal like looks like a big fern yeah go watch the ocean video you'll see it 
Yeah, he he played. He actually played that on it. I think, um, I think Zach Merck, who was the director of that, thought I was not in the band or something. That I was part of this like the string troop or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Got put over in left field. And they're like, yeah. What is that? With that dude playing that weird instrument? Yeah, with Thanks the two strings, you guys. You know that. You know next week I'm gonna have to learn how to play the automatona bone or whatever. <laughs> automatona bone. They're on Amazon. So for I the accordion. Well, the. It, it it looks like the kid from Stranger Things is playing it. I can't see his face. <laughs> oh my god, it does. Kaden. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. I thought we already have both these instruments in the band because you know Ridley Davis already plays them both. He's a master. Yeah, he does. But, He's uh, got them both. Yeah, accordion. Just because I know what an accordion sounds like. <laughs> oh, I hate the accordion. Really? Oh, I hate the accordion so much. I can't oh, stand. Can get it. Hold on. I, I have a. I, ha I had this thing where I have a some of my bases are active, and so I would pick up radio stations sometimes. And every time oh, we played the Executive Surf Club in Corpus Christi, I would always get Tejano music through my guitar, and so oh. the 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 accordion would be just as loud as my guitar sometimes that we were playing. I hate that thing. I hate the way it sounds. Oh. Oh, oh there it is. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Ah. <laughs> oh, damn, I feel like maybe he's not very good at it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say he played it well. <laughs> There you, oh, yeah. there, there you go. There you go. It's still better than I can do with one of those. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Here, here's the next one. <laughs> okay. Would you rather co-headline a tour with the Red Hot Chili Peppers or co-headline a tour with Muse? <laughs> oh, we've been with Muse once before. That was an amazing show. Oh, nice. Uh, it was a big festival. We were down below with like the, you know, the local kids. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I really love Muse. I mean, Chili Peppers would just I think. Didn't we play a jazz festival in New Orleans? We played Voodoo Fest, Voodoo and Chili Fest. Peppers were headlining. Yeah, headlined, and that was amazing. Um, I don't know. Muse has such cool stage performance. All their the drummer played that one show. We that was in Dallas, and mm -hmm. he played the entire show dressed as Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So, that's a tough one. I, I would, I'm going to go with the chili peppers. I'm sorry. Uh, I just I, I, like mother's milk is, I grew up on that. It was one of my favorite records ever. Knock me down. That's one of the first songs I ever learned how to play, you know, and flea is like, he that's come on. Yeah. Flea yeah. Is, 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 is as far as a bass player, like he's, he's one of the absolute best in the world. And he's just an amazing human being. I just love to hang out with him. I was going to say the exact same thing. Chili peppers. So I can hang out with flea all day if I can. Like There you go. I do just like Germ around, like sneak around. Oh, hey, I didn't know you were going to be here. What's up? <laughs> Eat for breakfast, man. Yeah. Hey, you want to go to the Sizzler? <laughs> Sizzler. Yeah. All right. Hey, shooter. <laughs> All right. What's our next? I think we have two more. Would right. you rather be the first band to play on the moon or travel back in time and perform at Woodstock 69? Oof. Uh, oh, I want to play on the moon. I think Ryan is already covered, so. Yeah, Ryan's already there. <laughs> you are here <laughs> I, I bet i know what will's answer is yeah just to be able to like you would get to hang out with hendrix likely or or see I that I maybe even get to jam with them and like turn up yep. and see have martial wars or something oh, come on, wait yeah. a minute the dude was so messed up on acid do you think he really wants to hang out with you well, oh. I would be so messed up on acid too. I don't know. We know we were hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, say I did. I'd be like, "Yeah, I totally melted my face." And Hendrix was in the vicinity. <laughs> in the vicinity. <laughs> well, we think we were playing on the moon. We'd be so high on acid anyway. So yeah, kind of takes both. Okay. I knew you were going to say Hendrix, though. I knew you were. I would go with Woodstock as well. I. You know the, the the Woodstock, like the 1999 Woodstock, the really bad one? You can watch. All, that's all on YouTube. You can watch pretty much every band's performance, the full concerts on YouTube. I don't know how I stumbled across that, but I did, and I went down that rabbit hole, oh, boy. and it was awful. Oh, it was no. so bad. Oh, I, I watched Limp Biscuits concert oh. Oh. just to see, just because yeah. I was intrigued. I was like, I kind of want to see this. And they kept flashing back to the crowd and then back to the stage, and I was like, this is 
bad. <laughs> like this is just bad. All of this is yeah, not good at all. Hey, who's performing but what, for the band? No, it is. It was weird. It was weird. <laughs> I mean, Woodstock '69 though, like that was. Come on, that's a legendary. Just to have been there would have been incredible. One honestly. of my favorite performances to watch of all time is Joe Cocker yes. performing. Yeah. <laughs> Legendary. Yes. All right, yep. Brian, what do you pick? The moon. Okay, the moon it is. <laughs> the, the moon. The moon. <laughs> it's halfway there. <laughs> the moon. Where'd you get that picture of Matt from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, if y'all had to rebrand Blue October, would you rather rebrand with crazy makeup or with crazy masks? Mask, because that's the little baby horse. That's yeah, the, oh, it's the little baby horse. Look at it. Hulk. Baby Hulk. What was that mask, in fact? I, I'm so sick of masks. Oh, I can't breathe in the damn things. I'm driving. I got my sunglasses on, and they steam up my sunglasses. And I can't see anything, and I drive into a ditch like I did a couple hours ago. Were you wearing your mask while you were driving? I am uh, I may have still had it on from leaving the store. That's what it was. That's going to be my excuse when I get home. <laughs> the sun was in my eyes. And the mask I drove into it. I, I had to be towed from driving into a ditch. Yes, it happened. I'm going to go. With, I'm going to go with makeup just for that reason. I'm tired of masks. Well, uh, we, yeah. we played with Kiss one time and, and uh, watching Gene Simmons, uh, I was kind of stalking him a little bit, looking into the dressing room. and he, They still do their own makeup. And so uh, I, I think it would have some fun with makeup. Yeah. yeah. I'll go with makeup, too. And Will, you want, are you going with the horsey mask? Yeah, yeah. Baby horse all day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I think this is our last one. All right. Would you rather perform... <laughs> The Doug song from The Hangover or perform Boats and Hose from Boats Step. And hose. Boats and Hose. Done. Boats and Hose. Boats and Hose. <laughs> all right. I mean, we, we saw John C. Riley at the airport a couple years ago, actually. We we're all too Europe. scared to go say hi. Yeah. <laughs> no, we he, were, no, remember, we were waiting for him to come out. And when he came out, it was like all these paparazzi came out of nowhere. Oh, so that's off, right. And yeah. I, yelled, I yelled at him. I was like, thanks for all the memories. <laughs> <laughs> he probably ran faster, you know. Yeah. Prestige worldwide. Prestige okay. worldwide, man. Classic. <laughs> well, since we only have a few minutes left. Dewey Cox. I, this went by way too fast. Thank you yeah. guys so much again. Any final things you guys want to plug? I know you have a live performance. Is it July 25th? Is yep. that the yep. July 25th. We'll do live stream full band Blue October. Whee! Oh, On yeah. Get back up. TV dot TV, right? Get back up dot Get TV back up dot TV. Um, and then uh, our newest single fight for love. We have uh, lyric videos out for this is what I live for. Uh, you can also stream any of the uh, stage performances that Justin has done recently in the last two months. Uh, you can watch the videos for Oh My My. Um, and I believe there's one that just got done filming for moving on, but I don't know if it's going to be released anytime soon. So, uh, yes, go to getbackup.tv for all of your Blue October needs. Awesome. And, Will, you have your album coming out tomorrow on Bandcamp? That's right. Live in Lockdown, Volume 1. So, awesome. absolutely. Yeah. Link in bio. <laughs> Link in bio. Link in bio. That's the new band, Link in bio. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like we, like, barely scratched the surface, so we'll have to do this again. And, Matt, thank you so much for coordinating everything. Oh, anytime. My pleasure. Hell yeah. Well, Thank you guys so much. Once again, thank you to Matt, Ryan, and Will, of course, from Blue October. And we will see you guys real soon. And stay safe, everybody. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs>